Hello world, it is Friday, January 22nd, and uh, kind of cold and windy outside this morning. I mean, it's not that cold, but the wind makes it feel that way. I was outside playing frisbee with Willow and Baloo for a little while and threw it over the fence once, so I had to take a long walk and um, get out where it's unprotected, and it's, that wind is, is a bit bitter. Today's devotion is um, entitled Good Boundaries, written by John Edgerton. John bases the devotion upon 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 17, excerpts from that selection, uh, New International Version. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? As God has said, come out. Come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And John writes, I've heard the second Corinthians passage used, misused actually, to for forbid Christians from marrying non-Christians. Used as a kind of proof, proof texting cudgel, this passage sounds as if Christians are righteous and non-Christians are wicked. To follow this logic would... Uh, um, Sorry, they have a new website, and I have a, it covers up part of what I'm trying to read. To follow this logic, I really should be separating myself from anyone who is not a Christian, lest I be morally polluted. To be clear, I 100% disagree with that idea. <clears throat> In addition to being married to someone who is not a Christian, some of my most important professional relationships are with non-Christian faith leaders. One of my mentors, a man who, had, who taught me a lot about what pastoring was, was not a Christian, much less a pastor. I'm not going to cut myself off from non-Christians just on account of this passage from 2 Corinthians. Yes, Paul does have a point about separating myself from wickedness. They are certainly, there are certainly groups of people I would never choose to align myself with. I'm not going to co-sponsor a winter coat drive with the Proud Boys. For what does the gospel first preached by dark-skinned Middle Eastern people have in common with white supremacy? I'm not going to plan a teen mental health campaign alongside a group that teaches LGBTQ teens that they can pray themselves straight. For what does the God who created the human body and called it good have in common with bigotry? There absolutely are people in the world who are walking paths of wickedness. And as a Christian, I should not be associating myself with such people. This is not easy stuff. Where do I draw these boundaries, boundary lines? If I draw them too narrowly, I find myself in an echo chamber. Draw them too widely, however, and I find myself breaking bread with those who are actively hurting loved ones. Each of us must decide where to draw our non-negotiable lines. It matters very much. Our values are revealed by the company we keep. And prayer. Surround me with those whose righteousness exceeds my own, that I might learn from them the paths of peace. Amen. A lot in my mind swirls around thinking about this. Um, one thing that hit me is the people who consider themselves righteous Christians and behave in exactly the way John speaks against in this devotion in that uh, they turn away people, uh, LGBT folk, um, people who aren't like them, um, people who they view as sinners, they demean and cast aside. Um, and the other thing that brings to my mind is um, when I was a teen, uh, my best friend um, at the time um, had an older brother who was um, involved, often in, in trouble with the police and involved in drugs. And yeah, I went to some parties when I was a teenager with him. And my mom was kind of worried about it. And I said, well, rather than worrying about um, my friend's brother's influence on me, what about my positive influence on him? Because it can go both ways. Because I also think, you know, Jesus often is depicted uh, as um, breaking bread with those whom his society felt he should not be breaking bread with, with quote-unquote sinners and tax collectors and prostitutes, um, untouchable people, people his, um, who in his time were considered people.
people not to be hanging around with. And yet that's exactly who Jesus hung out with. So there's a mixed bag there. Um, certainly, I don't think if you're hanging out with the Proud Boys, if you're not uh, actively working to help them see the error in their ways, but are working in support of them, yeah, then maybe you ought to, um, ought to separate yourself from a group like that. A um, lot to think about in, in this devotion. And I think um, we do need, in a way, to separate ourselves from wickedness. But you also have to pray to God for wisdom to understand what is wickedness and whether you're called to actually try to change, to be an agent of change, working alongside God to overcome that wickedness. So lots to think about in this devotion today. Hope you have a good day, and if you do go outside, bundle up. Um, looks like the wind is calming down a little bit, but um, I understand we may have a couple of cold days and maybe even some snow, I think, Monday or Tuesday. We'll see. Take care and have a good day.